Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's for Sunday, August the 22nd, or is it the 21st? Is it the 21st? 21st. Wrong date inside the bulletin. My apologies. Uh, welcome to everybody who's watching us online. Thank you very much for joining us. As we begin our service of worship, we acknowledge the land in which we gather on is the traditional territory, first to the Neutral people, then the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe people, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is within the land protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. We are reminded that our great standard of living is directly related to the Indigenous people's resources and their care for this land. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these our laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Glory be to God on high, and earth, peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that take us away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that take us away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are taught by your word that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the one who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from the book of Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say Psalm 71, verses 1 to 6, responsively by the full verse. 
In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. No, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my craig and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. Holy God, be our strength and our salvation, that we may never be ashamed to praise you for your mighty acts. We ask this through Jesus Christ. Amen. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. <clears throat> you have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order, order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the <clears throat> assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When, when he laid his hands on her, Immediately, she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him, saying, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his oxen or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? 
When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Rules, I love rules, you know. Um, rules help us, you know, create kind of a polite society, a safe society. They're important, that's what, you know, gets us through the day. However, sometimes rules can seem a little silly or a wee bit of a pain in the butt, depending on what they are. Silly rules, these are two actual laws. One's, it's a bylaw, still law, it's in Ottawa, and the other one's in a Canadian federal law. So in the city of Ottawa, there is a bylaw that actually states it is against the law to paint your garage door or your front door purple. I'm sorry, was there a mad rush on purple paint that everybody decided to, in their communities? Why does that need to be a bylaw? The other one, just so you know, in Canada, if you are going to pay in coin, you can only pay with up to 25 pieces of coin. So if something costs you $25 and you had 25 loonies, you could pay with your 25 loonies. However, if something cost you $26 and you were gonna pay with 26 loonies, technically you were breaking the law. Why? I don't know, it seems quite silly. But as silly as some rules are, they are necessary. Now, my motto when it comes to rules and laws, is sometimes I like to bend and flex, you know, not necessarily break them. But sometimes, you know, no matter how hard you try, they are not allowed to be bent or flexed. There is no exceptions, no matter how hard one tries. Example. So throughout the pandemic, there were times where masks were worn, all the time and then there were times when it was not. The one time where I tried really really hard never to wear a mask um, was at the Eucharistic prayer because the consecration is important and we were told at the beginning of the pandemic that that was okay and then unfortunately um, the numbers started to go up and we got a new directive saying that no matter what no exceptions masks had to be worn 100% during the service even during the Eucharistic prayer. Okay, so I am hosting Clericus, and Clericus, just so you know, is a once a month meeting with all the priests in the region. Um, it's in person, social distancing and all, and we have a guest speaker, and that guest speaker is the Archdeacon Bill Mouse. Now, if you don't know who Bill is, Bill is the Archdeacon for the entire diocese, and he is the bishop's right-hand person. So when it comes to authority in the diocese, it's the bishop, and then Bill. Bill is at this clericus, and we always start our clericus with the Eucharist, and I'm wearing my mask. I take my mask off during the Eucharistic prayer. Say the consecration, put my mask back on, distribute communion, we finish, everything's great. We go over to the guild hall, and Bill is there to this day to go over the new regulations and to explain why the diocese has implemented them and to help us so we can answer questions in case any of you guys had any questions. And then he gets to the part about the Eucharistic prayer and just looks at me and says, under no exceptions, all priests will be wearing their masks during the Eucharistic prayer. And I'm like, but Bill, listen, um, I don't know if you've noticed, our sound system is horrible and people struggle to hear me when I'm not wearing a mask. I said, you put a mask on and they're gonna not hear me at all. Bill just kind of awkwardly smiles and says, rules are rules, Jody, no exceptions. And besides, I've heard you at other functions, I'm sure you'll be fine. Nothing like being told you're a loudmouth by the archdeacon. Our gospel today is about the leaders of the Jewish church obsessing the rules, mainly keeping the Sabbath holy. 
and they're so obsessed with keeping the Sabbath holy that they actually come up with other rules, other regulations, a list of do's and don'ts. And one of the don'ts is actually to care for people. You are not allowed to care for people or heal them on the Sabbath. So here we have Jesus who is healing this woman who is in a great deal of pain, freeing her from bondage, freeing her from being crippled for 18 years, and he is criticized. His reaction is brilliant because he challenges them on the animals. He's like, I'm sorry, but you untie your animals from the manger and you walk them to be fed and to be watered. That is more work than caring and loving somebody. Caring and loving somebody is not as much work as taking care of your animals. Keeping the Sabbath holy. What does that really mean? How do we keep the Sabbath holy? What does a holy Sabbath actually look like? Does that mean that the entire day is free from work? But then we need to define work. Is gardening work? Is cooking work? What is work? And is by coming to church the only way that one keeps the Sabbath holy? So now we also have to define church. Is church only being in these four walls? What about the people who are watching right now? Is that church? I know there's people here that would argue with me a great deal and saying that if you are not here, it doesn't count. But I would argue the other way because there are people who are choosing, choosing to watch this service and I would rather them watch this service than then not join us at all. I think sometimes we get caught up of following the letter to the law and our old way of thinking. The Pharisees did. They were so caught up in Moses' law that they were unable to see the true spirit of God's laws, which was about caring for one another. Romans 13.10, we hear, love is the fulfillment of law. When we spend more time caring about the law than worrying about other people, we're missing the point of what Jesus is saying. When we demonstrate acts of compassion, we demonstrate acts of holiness and holy work, and that is what God wants us to do. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure God will have a little chit-chat with me about it someday. But in the meantime, I'm sticking to that story. And let's be honest, if we did not have holy work on the Sabbath, then why am I here? Why is Larry here? I got Pat, I got Kathy, I got Michael, I got Karen. All these people for this service are doing holy work. They are making the service special. We have to have some work on the Sabbath. In the Gospel of Mark, we hear Jesus say that the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. In other words, we cannot lose sight of the purpose of the day, and the purpose of the day is to rest and send, spend some time with God. However, I'm just going to throw something out there that might be a little controversial, because, you know, that's what I do. Does the Sabbath have to be Sunday? Does the Sabbath have to be Sunday? I can tell you quite honestly, in 22 years of working in the church, my Sabbath has not always been Sunday. My Sabbath has been Monday or Wednesday or Friday. If you ask any priest, most of them, many of them, I shouldn't say most, many of them will tell you that their Sabbath, unfortunately, is not Sunday. As much as we would like to share a Sabbath with you, we're just not able to. And I think this is a really important thing to remember because our world is changing. We live in a world where things are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. People work 60 to 80 hours. Families don't sit and eat together anymore. The Sunday Sabbath is a very traditional, old Christian experience. And yes, we would love everybody to be here, but not everybody can. 
but everybody deserves a Sabbath. Everybody deserves a day to sit and relax and breathe and spend time with the Lord. I'm sure if I ask Michael how many people are watching right now, he might just tell me two or three. But I can tell you when I check the video reviews next Sunday or next Saturday, there's usually between 80 to 60 people who watch this service alone. So there's 80 to 60 different people who are experiencing this service, who are taking Sabbath on another day. Who are taking Sabbath on another day. Gone are the days where everything is closed on Sunday, and unfortunately Sunday is just another day to many, many people. We as a Christian community need to accept and welcome people however they attend however they attend. Maybe they attend, you, you know, there's somebody here, they just attend on Sunday. Maybe they just attend on Tuesday for morning prayer. Maybe they just watch online. Maybe they just come to service on Thursday. That's okay. Our gospel today comments on the rigidness of authority. And when we are too rigid with our rules, people suffer. People get hurt. They lose their sense of self, their sense of joy, their sense of peace. And when we become too rigid, people leave. People leave. The Jewish leaders thought that Jesus was breaking God's commandments, but he wasn't. He was breaking their extra rules and their extra reg regulations, the ones that basically they implemented to avoid loving others. What Jesus was trying to explain is that loving others is much more important in the world. Jesus was a radical. He was arguing against the status quo. He was trying to help the Jewish people. He felt they were in a rut and he was trying to push them out of it. As we continue to slowly come out of the pandemic, as we continue to work on our mission action plan, I think we need to look at what this gospel is encouraging us to do, and that's to look at things differently. It's inspiring us not to get upset necessarily with the number of bodies in the pew. It's challenging us not to make people feel bad or guilty for not necessarily being here on Sunday. And it's motivating us to focus on celebrating new and creative ways to worship the Lord and to accept and bring others into our community. The Jewish people lost their ability to connect with God because they were focused too much on the rules and regulations. And so God, to reconnect to the Jewish people, he sent his son. And Jesus said there are only two rules. O oh, Israel, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. We can have a strong relationship with the Lord by loving others. When we show compassion and understanding, even on the Sabbath, we are demonstrating God's laws. We are fulfilling the Lord's laws. Today's story is a story of freedom. The woman who was healed, she was freed from a disease that crippled her for over 18 years. For us, it's a different type of freedom. It's a freedom to understand more, to love more, be compassionate, be accepting, and be more tolerant. The freedom that we can receive can be transforming if we want it to. And through that transformation, our faith can be deepened and we can be free to do God's work in this world and to live into the true, true spirit and meaning of the Sabbath. Amen.
Together we will say the Apostles' Creed count found on page 189. Please stand. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died on the third day. He was seven to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Please kneel or sit for the prayers of the people. Gathered in the name of Jesus, united by the power of the Holy Spirit, saying, have mercy upon us. You are the bread of life, O God. You feed us with manna, and you satisfy our needs with your words. For the food that never perishes, we thank you. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy upon us. In the Niagara Diocese, we pray for the Right Reverend Susan Bell, our Bishop, Jody, our Rector, St. John the Evangelist, the Reverend Canon Kathleen Morgan, Rector, and the people of that parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy upon us. In our parish, we pray for Angus McLeod, Evan and Jennifer Maine, Bill Mallinson, Doug Miracle, Sandy Marr, Max Marsden, their families and loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy upon us. In our healing prayers, we remember Julie Brennan, Mary Cullen, Elizabeth Ebert, Elner Kendall, Robert Krasick, Judy Rigsby, Pam Simons, Doug Stewart, Anthony, Julia, Jay, Derek, Tammy, Celia, Dave, Sarah, Marlene, June, Davy, Gary, Sean, Jackie, and Colleen. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy upon us. You call us, O God, to be renewed, to put on a new nature, to conform our lives to your will. Form the church into a source of life which feeds a needy world. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy upon us. In a hungry world, O God, we do not know how to feed one another. Hear the cries of the poor. Strengthen us to answer their need. Dry the tears of those who mourn. To care for the children. To preserve the land. To honor all your people. O Lord, source of manna in the wilderness, let us pray to the Lord. O God, hear our prayer. We long to embrace you, O God, we rejoice in your invitation to life. Urge us gently into the arms of our sisters and brothers that we may find you there. O Lord, font of life, all these things we have spoken and those we name in the silence of our hearts, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit are one God forever and ever. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor are in heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
to the end that all that believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours alone but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people. We acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share each other's sign of peace. Peace. Peace be peace. with you at home. Let us pray. 
God of glory, receive all we offer this day as a symbol of our love and increase in us the true and perfect gift. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet and right in our bound and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened for us a new way of everlasting life. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to you, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God who didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that which his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, our Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son has commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with great power, with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake in this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is to always have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we might evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that take us away the sins of the world, grant us that peace. My dear friends who are watching, who cannot be here with us today, I invite you wherever you may be at this moment to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, though many, and make us one in you.
things for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Glory to God, whose power and in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to our God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. May the strength of God sustain you. May the power of God preserve you. May the hands of God protect you. And may the way of God direct you. And may the blessing of God go with you this day and forever. Amen. Please be seated for just a few announcements. Uh, first and foremost, yes, uh, Friday was our first ever um, St. James, St. Brendan's golf tournament at Whiskey Run. It was so much fun. I hit the ball 95% of the time. 95. I was good. I did well. Um, I have to say thank you to Kathy Carries and Donna Abbott because um, they were pretty much the coordinators and organizers and so I'm very, very happy for everything that they did. Thank you to the staff at Whiskey Run. The food was amazing. It was a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, with saying that though, I want to encourage people. So there was, Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, eight gentlemen? There were eight gentlemen from St. Pat's Parish that joined us for our golf tournament. So St. Pat's is having a golf tournament on Saturday, September 10th. So if you're a golfer and you want to participate in another, you know, golf tournament, I'm actually, you know, let's support, you know, they were gracious to come and support us. So let's go and support them if you're able. So uh, call St. Pat's Parish for all the details on that one. So. Um, Sunday, September 4th is the Rector's Community Barbecue. Um, if you haven't bought your tickets yet, I encourage you to do so. You can buy tickets there that day. You can buy food that day. It's just for the chef back there to wrap his head around numbers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if, you, if you're waiting till the day of, that's okay too. Um, I am gonna ask for volunteers. Now, now that the golf tournament's done, um, I am looking for a few volunteers uh, for that day. Um, hopefully to sell 50-50. I'm still in the process of trying to get that license. Um, but also, we're going to have a little kids section. So if you're interested to help with the kids section a little bit, we're having a, um, a lovely lady come and uh, do some face painting. Her daughter hopefully might be doing some balloon animals, and then I naturally had just have some kids games. Just a small kids corner in one part of the park. Um, if you are interested to help volunteer, I would greatly appreciate it. And last but not least, if you haven't already signed up for Revive and you're thinking about it, please do so, because I would love, love, love for you to participate in uh, Revive with me. So, our service has ended. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week, everyone. <laughs>